Hey, onliners, this is Leonard again, and this is lab number uh, eight, F equals MA. And uh, you probably have to watch the video to get a couple of the data points for this, so I'm hoping you're watching this uh, while you're thinking about doing this lab at home. And you might need a friend because I'm trying it on my own, and it's been very difficult. So uh, let me show you what I've done so far. I've actually found the mass of one of the carts. Actually, I'm going to give you the mass of both carts. Once you build it, one of them will have a spring attached, that one, see the spring thing attached, and the other one will just be old blank. And I'll give you the mass of both of these guys. Okay, the mass of the one with the spring attached after you put that all together is, there's 500, 600, 606.0, uh, almost 0.1, 606.09. If you're really into sig figs, <laughs> it won't really matter that much. So I'm going to say 606. Now, the cart without the spring attached. The one without the spring attached is surprising me. It's 500 plus 140. That's 640, 646.6. 646.6. Holy mackerel. I put a mass just on a piece of string just for a second and then I hooked it over a pulley. The pulley's on the table and the pulley tape the string is connected to the plug. I just put a little knot in there so that it would stay. And that looks like it's pretty horizontal because that's what I want. I want it horizontal straight across. So the weight is going to pull the cart. So I'm going to have a known force, the force of whatever this weighs. So if that's a 50 uh, whatever 50 weighs. So 0 0.05 kilograms times 9.8, it's uh, about 0.49 newtons, about a half a newton. And then on the other side, I have the dreaded ticker tape timer. You thought you were done with that? Come on, we got to get our money's worth. That was one of the most expensive items in the kit. And on that, we're going to tape a ticker tape timer to the end of the cart. So what the cart does, we will have a dot record of its acceleration. Let me set that up. So I taped the tape to the cart through the ticker tape timer and I intentionally made it just short enough so that it will run out of tape before the mass hits the floor. That way the entire tape has a record of acceleration on it. And I'll show you a really quick way of finding acceleration. All right, now here's the weird part. You are going to put the masses on the cart that you're not using to hang. My recommendation, but you can try stuff on your own, I'm figuring five trials. 100 grams, 200 grams, 300 grams, 400 grams, and 500 grams, plus the mass of the cart. And that's the total mass. That's going to end up being our accepted value for a graph we're going to do later. But right now, think about this. The mass that's being accelerated is the total cart and everything on it. But it's also the mass that's hanging on the end that's doing the pulling. So the mass that's doing the pulling also has inertia, so it also wants to stay at rest. So in order to keep the total mass constant, we have to find the masses that we're going to hang on the end. we got to get them from the cart. So you got to plan this out ahead of time. So here's my recommendation. Start with that. And then take the 100 and put the 100 on the end. And now the total mass will always be 500 plus the cart. Got it? Let's give it a shot. We're going to do five trials. I have 100 hanging, and then I have 200 smack dab in the back of the cart. Why did I put it back there? Think about that. Think about anything at rest that wants to remain at rest. You don't want those things slipping around. So when that thing goes accelerating, you want them to already be back there. Okay? So I put these over here because I have nobody right now to help me, and I need to protect the, the thing so it doesn't fall on the floor. You would hopefully have a big friend that catches it at the end before it snaps that pulley off. So now I have the thing all loaded up with 100 grams hanging from the end and 400 grams sitting in the cart. And all i got to do is push the ticker tape timer and let go and I get the dots. Okay, see why you need a friend? I'm going to let go with my middle finger and start the timer with my thumb. Here it goes. And it accelerated. And that acceleration is showing up on the tape. See the tape? And I'm going to show you a quick way of figuring out the acceleration so you don't have to do that crazy graph from last time. 
Okay, here goes. You get your trusty dusty half meter stick and you put the first black dot that it was sitting on right at the zero mark and then you go over to somewhere about at the end. I like that 48.1 right there. Do you see that? 48.1. So now you got the distance, 48.1 centimeters. And if you count the dots, all these dots, and multiply it by 60th of a second, you have the time. And then remember that kinematic equation? VIT plus one half AT squared. Can't you find A from that? Huh? Uh huh? See, you don't have to do all that graphing stuff. So count the dots, and that's what I'll do, and I'll let you know what this one is. Okay, I counted 69 time intervals. I didn't count the first dot, I just counted the first, the next dot as number one, and I went down and got 69 time intervals. If you count the first dot, then that's 69 dots, 68 time intervals. But it's 69 time intervals for me, and all I gotta do is take 69 and divide by 60, and I got the time. The distance is 49.1, and therefore, was it 48.1? The distance is 48.1, so I got distance and time. Let's see if, try it. See if you get the same acceleration I do before you watch the tape. Stop the tape and try it now. All right, I got 72.74 centimeters per second squared. So I changed that to meters per second squared and I got 0.7274 meters per second squared. See how easy it is to get the acceleration? Do that five more times. This time I have 300 grams on there and 200 hanging off the end. I'll get another tape, but this time I'm pulling harder, so I should have a greater acceleration, and I should have a table of force hanging, that's how much it weighs, and accelerations from the tape. Guess what I'm going to graph? Acceleration depends on the force, so acceleration should be on the y-axis, force should be on the x-axis, and the slope of the line should be straight. Ooh, I hope it's straight. The slope of the line should give me 1 over the mass, and you know the mass. The mass is the mass plus 500. Okay, here's something I just realized. Make sure the tape is short enough so that by the time that mass hits the floor, the tape is gone. Otherwise, the last couple dots will be constant speed, and you want acceleration throughout all the dots. Or just to be on the safe side, don't go all the way to like 48 or 47 centimeters. Depends on the height of your table, but uh, you'll know how far you're allowed to go before it won't work anymore. Okay? This is hard to videotape and do at the same time. I hope you guys are impressed. But here goes a hundred. And knocks everything over. <laughs> Alright, notice how this acceleration is remarkably greater. See how the, the uh, dots are getting farther apart quicker with the second one. If, uh, you'll notice I'm pulling with twice the force, so they're probably uh, accelerating twice as much. I hope so. Let's see. All right, this time I only counted 47 time intervals, 47 sixtieths in 48 centimeters. Let's see what A is now. All right, I got 156.45. I was hoping to get double that, which is 144, 145, and I got 156. I don't know. That might be really bad. But when I graph, hopefully it'll all work out. Do three more like that, and you'll have five dots just keep adding a hundred every time eventually you're gonna have nothing here and they're all gonna be dangling on the end it feels weird but it's really true that the total mass is constant and that should be the inverse of the slope of your line alright give it a try let me know how it is write me up a nice lab that has in its theory all that stuff about F equals MA and let me know you understood the stuff from the book about the net force causing the mass to accelerate and uh... See what you do with the graph, all that stuff about inertia and Newton's three laws.